Hello, my name is Rafa. I'm the other chef for Franco Manca, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make our sourdough pizza. To start with, we're going to go through the ingredients you're going to use. The most important one would be the sourdough, the mother dough starter. To make it, it's quite easy, but it's quite time consuming. It takes about two weeks, two weeks and a half to make it. All you need to make it is around 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water, 10, 10 grams of honey or juice. You just mix all together and leave it to rest for a couple of days. After that, you're gonna see that start bubbling. After another couple of days, you add a bit more of flour, a bit more of water, leave it to rest again. Keep doing it so until it actually bubbles and start like growing size. So that's the sourdough starter. Now we're gonna start with the recipe, which we're gonna use first the water. For the water, we're gonna use just tap water at a average temperature of 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna add the water to the bowl. Next ingredient would be the fine sea salt, normal fine sea salt. Um, what the salt's gonna do to your dough, it's gonna change how elastic it's gonna be, also give flavor. So if you put too much salt, you're gonna have a very elastic dough and it's gonna be very hard for it to stretch. If you put too little salt in your dough, your dough is gonna be very fragile and it's gonna ferment too fast. The proportion I'm using here is one liter of water and the average salt I'm gonna use is around 40 grams per liter of water. Okay, so you just put the salt in and make sure you dissolve it. Next step would be adding the solder starter. I would recommend at home for when, when you're starting making it, put um, a little bit, let's say around 15 to 20 grams per liter of water, just so you know w where to start. So next step, I'm gonna get my solder starter. I'm gonna put it inside of the water. I'm gonna just dissolve it as if I'm trying to clean my hand of it. It doesn't need to be completely dissolved from in the water. As soon as the water is white, and even if you have some bits like this, it should be okay. Next ingredient will be the flour. At Franco Manco, we have a type of flour that's made special for us. We ask the supplier when they make the flour to make it a type zero, which is a bit uh, grainy. And also we ask them to keep the skin of the grains, so it has a bit more fiber into it. Okay, so I'm gonna add my flour slowly to start with. The proportion of flour will be around um, one kilo and 670 grams of flour for a liter of water, average. Every type of flour is different. If you're using different type of flour, you're probably gonna use um, a bit more or a bit less, depending on the strength of the flour. So you're gonna add enough flour for you to get to the point where you can actually remove your dough from the bowl and uh, knit it on the... Just keep adding it. And when I'm talking through the videos, for example, I just tell the people, like, if you have kids who like making mess, just get them around and they're gonna love making your kitchen a big mess. So, literally just gonna fold it inside until you get to the point where you can actually remove it from the bowl. You can use a bit of flour to clean off your hands of the excess of the dough, it will make it easier for you. So, once you can actually remove the dough from the bowl, you're gonna turn it over and then you're gonna start knitting it. Literally just folding it and pushing. You should do it for about five to six minutes once the, the dough is like consistent. So you get a nice elasticity to the dough. You know when your dough has had enough flour when the counter is clean. For example, here, you can see my dough is ready. I just need to knit it a bit more because um, I'm knitting it and the counter is totally free of the dough being stuck to it. If it's sticking a bit too much to your hands, just dust your hands in the flour and keep doing it. Then you're gonna shape it in a shape of a ball just by pushing the dough inside here, folding it inside. And once it's ready, once it's like this, you can get your bowl, put it back inside. And to avoid it um, from drying and creating a very dry crust on the top, you're gonna get some cling film. And close your bowl, so just so the air doesn't go inside of it. So once you put the cling film on the top, you're gonna leave it to rest for about 15 hours. On the next day, you're gonna come and shape your pizza balls. After 15 hours, that's kind of the result you'll be looking for. Uh, the dough will have grown like quite considerably, like almost double the size. And uh, we're gonna soon cut it in 
into portions and put inside of those trays. Um, at Franco Manca, we use those trays because it also helps remove some of the moisture of the dough. Yeah, if at home, if you don't have like those kind of trays, use like a container or a tight container and make sure you have enough space to put to fit the dolls in. Okay, so all you're gonna do now, you're gonna remove your dough from the bowl where you're holding it. Using a scraper, you're gonna cut it in, into portions. Um, ideally, if you're gonna make a pizza home, you'd want your pizza bowl to be around 250 grams. You just you can have a scale next to you to cut it and weigh it properly, or you can just do it by eye. I'm gonna just cut some portions with the scraper. And then I can show you how to shape the pizza bowl. So those are the portions. Now you have a few different ways of shaping it. Um, the easiest one that people learn, you make like a, a claw with your hands and then you're just gonna place it in the top and move it around. One tip, if the dough is sticking too much in your hands, just dust your hand a bit of flour and then you can shape it nicely. And that would be one pizza bowl. The other way is you can fold the inside Then you close it nicely underneath. That would be another one. And the way you usually use as Franco Manca, most of the guys, they just fold it in using both hands. And it's much faster. So that's how you do your pizza balls. Now I have those tray, this tray, I'm gonna leave it to rest for about three or four hours. So it's gonna double in size again. I'm just gonna put it on the sides and you'll see the final result in a bit. Once your dough is ready, you're gonna get some of the flour and you're gonna sprinkle it on the top. Then you're gonna cut through the lines with a five spatula and scrape it off from the bottom. So this part here is gonna be on the bottom. Move your tray to the side. Add a bit of more flour on the counter. A bit of flour on the top. And now I'll show you guys the easiest way to make it. Basically when people are learning how to make pizzas, stretching, that's how they do it. So all you're gonna do, you're gonna get your hand from the middle and you're gonna press it down. Make it as flat as possible, leaving the edges. Then you're gonna turn it over, do exactly the same thing. Once this is done, you lift it up a bit, peel off the flour from underneath, place on the counter, and one hand is gonna move up and down, the other one is gonna stretch. So all you're gonna do is gonna turn, and stretch at the same time. Yeah, and that's your pizza base stretched. To make your pizza, you're now gonna need some tomato sauce. You're gonna get one ladder of tomato sauce, put it all in the middle. Then from the middle, you're gonna stretch it around. Trying to leave like a, a finger and a half on the edges just so we don't uh, destroy your nice puffed edges after. After that, you're gonna add some mozzarella. So that's a basic margarita pizza. It's the number two on Franco Manca. The main difference comes now, like when you have to cook it. At Franco Manca, we use massive ovens that reach around 500 degrees Celsius. And at home, you're gonna have an oven that oven is gonna go maximum of 300 degrees Celsius when you're cooking it. Obviously, you can uh, use some uh, tools to help you cooking your pizza, like a pizza stone, which is what I have here I'm gonna use today. Now I'm gonna grab my pizza stone to cook the pizzas. I'm just gonna lift my pizza and put it on the top. Adjust it on the top of the pizza stone, and then I'll move it inside of the oven. So 
So now we go to the final touches. We're gonna add the basil and the drizzle of olive oil. And from here you can cut and enjoy it. As I mentioned, the pizza is gonna be much crispier because of the cooking, so you can actually feel it, hear it as well. And just gonna cut it through. And then um, I'll show you guys how the Napolitans they eat the pizza actually. They just cut a piece through it, they fold it, and then from here, they just rub it back. Very hot. <laughs>